Okay. So welcome to the 2017 January Board Game Creator Seminar. I'm glad to see you guys here. This is a regular event we have at Bethany College. We bring a board game designer one to two each year to come talk about their craft and hopefully inspire you guys either to create board games or just to create in general. Today, we have some of the nicest people in board games. In fact, probably the nicest people in board games. And that is their asset. By being nice, by helping others, they have forged connections that have not only enabled them to meet interesting people and famous people in the board game world, but to climb up the ladder themselves, to become known designers, be it their game Tessin, be it their recently funny game Cobra, Kickstarter, be it their recently signed game, The Buy, by Grinnell and Games. Chris and Suzanne have been able to grow the community by helping the community. They're going to talk to us today how you can grow in your community by helping your community as well. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for having us, first of all. We uh, got to talk at Bethany College today and the town, and we just love it. This is such a nice area, and thank you all for having us. Uh, so, uh, we are Chris and Suzanne Zinsley. Um, we are board and card game designers. Um, we uh, run a company called Cardboard Edison. Um, we got into game design in 2011, um, and we started Cardboard Edison in 2012. Uh, our first game uh, that we came up with, we had no idea what we were doing. Absolutely no idea. We did not know anything about the industry. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes early on. Yeah, one of the things that we did um, was we designed the game and we actually wrote handwritten letters to all game stores in the area asking them if they would just carry the game. We, you know, it wasn't packaged, wasn't published, didn't have a barcode, nothing that you would need, there was no publicity. So it was really embarrassing and it was from mistakes like this that we kind of we're like, we should probably research this if it's something we really want to do. And when we started researching it, we found out that there's just a ton of information out there and available for this community. Uh, the, one of the great things about the board game community is they're very, very sharing, very giving. Um, and they're very willing to put information out there to help grow the hobby. Uh, one of the problems that we found early on was that while there's a lot of information, it is all over the place. Uh, it takes a lot of time and effort to track it down, to actually learn anything about the industry, about uh, how to put out a game and how to sign a game with a publisher, what a publisher actually is and does, um, uh, standards for board game design, play testing, prototyping, um, all, of, all this information. It's all out there, uh, but we found that it was very difficult to find. Uh, we figured that there are probably other designers that are out there that are in the same situation as us and that uh, are interested in the hobby, but they don't know exactly what to do, uh, don't know how to go about it. Uh, we saw people asking a lot of the same questions uh, online over and over again. Um, so we, we started uh, keeping track of all of these websites that have this useful information on it, blogs by board game designers, podcasts uh, by designers and publishers, uh, reviewers. And uh, so we created a website uh, called Cardboard Edison uh, that gathers together um, all that information. And we, as we found it, we would share it uh, with the community. Um, and that's really that's the starting point um, for how we got into the industry. Mm -hmm. All right, what about the, uh, how we actually open up the public uh, for uh, playtesting? Sure. So um, our first convention that we went to was Metatopia, which if you've never heard of Metatopia, it's a fantastic playtesting convention in Morristown, New Jersey in November, which is about half an hour away from us. Um, and it was the first time we went. We had already designed a couple games and we were already getting into the community, but we went the first time as playtesters and just to really start to meet the other designers and publishers uh, uh, in, in the area. Um, and from there we made just so many connections and that's one of the things that really started to propel us forward in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, the next convention that we went to uh, was another playtesting convention. Uh, it was in Delaware at the time. It's moved down to Baltimore since then. Uh, it's called Unpub. Uh, Unpub is an organization for unpublished board games. And uh, we took uh, a couple of our early designs to Unpub. Um, and we had the tremendous luck, uh, but there's a little bit of, a little bit of work behind the scenes that uh, helped us out. Uh, 
we actually got one of our games signed by a publisher that we met at Unpub. This is, this is our very first time that we took any of our games out into public to show anybody other than our close friends and family uh, for testing. Um, the game was called Tessin. Uh, it's a two-player real-time card game. And it got picked up by a publisher called Van Ryder Games. Um, and we met uh, AJ Porfirio, who runs Van Ryder Games, by offering to do testing of some of his other games. And uh, this happened a few months before the convention. We uh, heard him on a podcast. Uh, he said he was looking for people to test out his games. We reached out to him and we uh, did some testing. Uh, it's called blind play testing uh, because the designer was not present for it. Um, blind play testing, super duper valuable. Um, so uh, the fact that we had, we had made this connection with this publisher before we ever even asked him for anything, even showed him one of our games, uh, I think that went really uh, went a long way to helping uh, him be interested in working with us. Yeah, he actually seeks us out at the convention, and we got together, and he's like, oh yeah, let me, sh you know, show me what you have, and um, that kind of took off from there. Um, there's similar stories for uh, all of our other designs. Uh, we. Uh, uh, just uh, this past week, uh, it was announced that uh, we signed a game called Dubai with Greater Than Games, um, and the, uh, we hooked up with them uh, through an event that we were running. Uh, we have another game uh, that has not been announced to who the publisher is yet, uh, but uh, we also uh, connected with that publisher because they were aware of the work that we've done uh, with Carver and to try and help out the community. Yeah, and they actually reached out to us, and they said, hey, we know you guys, we heard that you're great to work with, we've heard really good things, please send us anything you have. Uh, so that actually leads us to, what does Cardboard Edison actually do? Uh, these, are, these are some of the things that uh, we have uh, decided to do to try and help out the community. Um, and all of these things are, uh, we, we credit so much of our success as designers to the work that we've done um, uh, under Cardboard Edison to help out the community. Um, so the primary thing that we do is uh, something that we just mentioned a couple minutes ago. There's so much useful material out there online. Uh, we provide one focal point where you can find all of this information. Yeah, um, we also interview designers and publishers. Um, and we create industry reports. Um, we also have a contest that recognizes unpublished designs which we're in the middle of right now. Um, and we have one of the judges in the room. <laughs> uh, and we maintain the directory of publishers. So this is what is really making us popular in the industry right now. The way we figured out what to do with these things, um, because we had no idea what the community wanted, what the industry needed. So we actually sent out a survey to our followers and to people and said, hey, you're in the board game industry, what do you want us to do? What need could we fill for you? And through the survey, we found out that this is actually what they were looking for. And so that is what kind of created our timeline and what our business plan and goals are going to be. And we have a couple other things that are still higher on the list that we're working towards. Yep. And, and a lot of these, uh, these items, these are things that have like Suzanne said, we, we found that the community wanted a lot of them are things that, that we ourselves wish were out there. Uh, the, uh, these industry reports, um, specifically, uh, we did a survey of board game designers who have signed their games with publishers, uh, and we found out uh, the information about the contracts that they signed. What kind of royalty rate uh, can you expect to get? Uh, what kind of advance can you get to expect to get? How long are the terms of the contract good for? What sorts of things do they cover? Um, this is all extremely useful information for board game designers, but very hard to come by. And we wish that there was a report like that out there. We had a need uh, for it ourselves, so we uh, were able to, to reach out to people that we had met and do this anonymous survey and then put out uh, reports that uh, all designers can benefit from. Uh, one of the other uh, things, the, uh, the last item on the list there, the directory of publishers. Um, designers uh, often have a hard time finding information about which publishers are accepting submissions, what they're actually looking for, uh, some, some basic information about the publishers themselves. Uh, 
a lot of it is, is available online, a lot of it's not. Uh, but even the information that is available is often hard to find. Uh, so we uh, reached out to publishers and we created a database that contains all of this information and puts it together in one place. Um, so all, all of these things are needs that, that we ourselves had as, as designers, uh, looking to work in the industry as designers, and we felt that there must be other people out there that are in the same position as us. Uh, so we reached out, um, and so that kind of was just one of the, one of the main points that, that we found uh, trying to work in the board game industry is that if you have a need for something, then there's a very good chance that there are other people who are in the exact same position as you. Um, and beyond that, you can be the one that does the thing that will help not only yourself, but other people. And uh, that is one way that you can make a name for yourself in the board game industry. Yeah, I mean, not just the board game industry, pretty much any industry that you want. If there's something that you need, and it's not out there, just try to start doing it yourself. Just good life advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now the important thing. <laughs> so there, there are a few reasons why this approach uh, seems to work so well in board games in particular, uh, as opposed to other industries. Good in general, but specifically for board games, it's a very, very small industry, first off. Uh, there, are, there are, It's growing very quickly, uh, but it's still very, very small. Video games are magnitudes of order uh, larger than board games. Um, there are very few full-time people in the industry. Uh, they, they are out there, um, but for the most part, the industry is run on uh, volunteer energy. It's run on passion. People who just love board games. Um, they are the ones who get most of the work in the industry done. Um, on top of all that, board games are in an inherently social activity. You're coming together, you're sitting across a table from people, having a good time together. So. Um, it is, it, it's, it's a, a perfect recipe for um, a personal interaction and when, uh, when you can uh, help someone else in such close quarters, uh, that is going to be memorable um, to the other people that you interact with. The board game industry in specific too is very unique because though um, you're with other designers, it's not really competitive. Um, so many people are willing to help each other help each other, which makes it very unique, which is another reason why the more you can help other people in the industry, the more likely you are to succeed and to find success and to find people really rooting for you. Um, I mean, so many times we'll be play testing a game and we'll say, oh, we know this publisher, this publisher would be great for it, and we'll make the introduction, and we've done that for people, they've done it for us, and it happens across the board um, in the board game industry. It's, it's it's very unique in that setting, very unlike most other industries. Even in situations where you would expect people to be competing against one another, um, publishers, they're, they're technically competing against each other within the market to sell board games, but they don't view themselves as competitors. They view uh, whatever's good for the entire hobby to be good for everybody in the hobby. Um, and so, so publishers will help other publishers, Designers will help other designers. And publishers, a lot of times a publisher will say, this game isn't right for our company, but why don't you take it to so-and-so, um, you know, tell them I sent you, and, you know, hopefully they'll pick up. And we know a lot of people who have uh, gotten their games published and picked up through that method. Definitely. Um, so, so what you have in board games is a situation where basically everybody knows everybody else. Um, and so that means that your reputation goes a really, it, it goes very far. Uh, word travels fast. Uh, there, there are every once in a while, you'll find a bad actor and their reputation gets, gets uh, people find out about it pretty quick. Um, but for the most part, the industry is extremely welcoming. Um, and uh, people are, are so willing to help each other because, in part, they know that uh, everybody that they may want to work with in the future is going to ask the people that they know that they've worked with in the past, how was it working with, uh, with this designer? Is this a designer that I can work with? Uh, publishers will, will ask that all the time. Yeah, um, also designers will ask that about publishers, because there are some publishers that aren't 
great to work with. So with the industry being so small, it's really, really positive because generally the people in it are fantastic. Um, but if, if they're not, you know about it. I mean, you know right away who is and who's not. Um, so always be on your best behavior. <laughs> Um, so the upshot of all of this is that uh, because connections mean so much in the industry, uh, when you uh, make a name for yourself, that's your foot in the door uh, to find a publisher that may be interested in your design, or a co-designer that you might want to work with, or uh, artists or distributors. Word of mouth is everything in the working industry. Uh, so we told you about some of the things that, uh, that we've done. Uh, to get our name out there uh, and to help other people in the industry. Um, and we have some suggestions for things that you might be interested in doing. Uh, this is definitely not an exhaustive list. Um, and, and honestly, it, it would be difficult to make an exhaustive list because the industry is changing so much, the needs of the people in the industry are also changing. Um, so, uh, in order to join the community, um, one of, if you're a designer, one of the best ways to do it is play testing. Yeah. How many people in here are, how many people in here are designers? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Like, have ever designed a game? Couple. Okay. Or consider um, designing a game. Yeah, consider. Okay, okay. All right, all right, there you go. Even if you're considering, if you put something down together, you're probably a designer, just <laughs> <laughs> don't realize it yet. Um, how many people in here have play tested a game? Okay, oh, okay. Go play tested something this morning. Too. <laughs> um, okay, so play testing is probably the base and the root of the game design industry. Um, what happens during a play test is a designer will design a game. It's usually in a pretty rough stage, it's very early. Some R's are normally on index cards and markers and pennies for tokens. Um, and you need people to play the game because that's how you find out whether the game works or not. So that's what playtesting is, is you get people together and you play the game. Um, and you find out what works, what doesn't work, and why. Um, and so that is what all designers need. So if you're looking to get into the industry, this is a great way, is to go and to playtest other people's designs, and then your own too, because once you play test other people's designs, they're much more willing to play test yours. And, and that's an important point. Um, it's a great idea to play test other people's designs before you ask them to play test yours. Um, it's it's a common courtesy, and uh, it, it it makes you look good. Um, you're helping other people before you're asking for help in exchange. Um, when uh, we often will see at at play testing events. Uh, we'll see every once in a while there'll be a designer who is kind of sitting at their table um, and they're waiting for other people to come to them. Uh, but meanwhile, all the other designers, they're going to the other, other uh, designers' tables saying, hey, tell me about your design, what are you working on? Those are how you make connections, not by sitting at a table and waiting for people to come to you. Right, yeah, and people are very willing to do it. You just have to, you know, get yourself out there. That's very important. And there's also a lot of people that online are looking for playtesting, so you can find them that way. And you can do blind playtesting, which is, as we said before, playtesting with the designer not there. And the connections that you build, when you play a game with the designer, the connections that you build are just so important because you're really, you're, you're there and you're judging and evaluating their baby. Like, this is something they pour their heart and soul into. And so the fact that you're taking time to sit and to play the game and then to give feedback just really uh, leaves a memorable impression in, in people's minds. Um, and honestly, blind playtesting is such an important step in the process of getting a game published that if you are willing to do that for a designer, they are going to remember that you stepped up. Um, I can't tell you how many posts there are on online forums saying, hey, I need help testing this. Um, and, and, and a lot of times, like, like, sometimes they'll just go unanswered. Because everyone is looking to get their game tested, but there are far fewer people who are actually stepping up to help other designers first. Um, and if you do that, if you uh, say, yes, I'll uh, help test your game, and you print it out, and you play
play it and you write up some feedback and you send those notes to that designer, that's gold. Designers will love that. Um, so, uh, speaking of um, forums, there are a lot of places online where you can engage in discussion about board games, about the industry. Um, you can uh, help answer questions, help designers work through issues that they're having with their designs. Uh, they may have, they may be looking for feedback, hey, what do you think about this theme for a game? Is this something that you think would be interesting? Um, just get, getting involved in the conversation online is a really great starting point. Yeah, some places are um, Twitter. If you can go on Twitter, Twitter is phenomenal. It's, and on Twitter, if you're nervous about talking to people face to face or you're not able to get to the places where they are, Twitter is a great place to do it online. There's also the Card and um, Board Game Designers Guild. It's a group in Facebook. If you're not a member of it, you can um, X, um, X be added and they'll add to join and they'll add you without a problem. Uh, Reddit has a whole lot. Um, Board Game Geek has a bunch. So even if you're new to the industry and you're not, you don't think of yourself as a designer per se, you can still give feedback. Um, feedback from everybody is welcome and needed and sometimes being new makes your feedback even more valuable because it's not it's not obstructed by everything else that the person has been through. If you have somebody that's very experienced in games, they know what they like, they know how they like it, they you know, they have prejudices against other games. So being new and green um, can actually be really beneficial, so don't be afraid to put your opinion out there. People really need it and want it. Um, so, uh, some of the types of things that um, people in the industry are always looking for feedback about. Um, cell sheets, these are uh, one sheet uh, documents about, uh, about your game that uh, you're going to use to try it and get a publisher interested. Um, these are very common and uh, people don't often know exactly what kind of information should be on there. How does it look? Is it interesting? Am I doing my game justice uh, with this very, very brief description about it? Offering feedback about that, very common. Um, mechanics and themes. Uh, certain aspects of, of your game, if you're not sure whether it makes sense, you can run this by uh, people online uh, or provide feedback uh, to other designers who are uh, looking for information about whether, whether the game makes sense, whether it seems like something they might be interested in. Uh, Kickstarter crowdfunding pages have become extremely common in board games, and so a lot of times you'll see small publishers, oftentimes they're the designer and the publisher, uh, they will look for feedback on their campaign pages. Uh, the, they're, they're pretty complicated, there's a lot that goes into running a crowdfunding campaign. And so uh, providing feedback on uh, pledge levels, schedules, um, describing the game, everything that goes into a crowdfunding campaign, also one area that uh, is uh, very useful that you can provide feedback for. Yeah, I mean, just basic things, you know, if you saw this, would you buy it? And if your answer is no, no, I wouldn't buy it because X, Y, Z can tell so much to a designer and a publisher, and it only takes you a few minutes to do, but yet, again, you're building that connection. And especially if, if you're new to the industry, if you're uh, interested in board games in general, uh, but you're new to design, uh, you are kind of the target market for the publisher, and so your impressions of the of the camp, uh, crowdfunding campaign page very useful for them. Yeah. One other thing, um, if you're designing a game, or if you ever want to design a game, and you're nervous and you don't know if your game is up to par, go to a playtesting event. Playtest people's games. You're going to see what really goes on at a playtesting event. The first time we went to Metatopia, like, we were so nervous, you know, we'd never been to one before and we didn't know. And here are people who we knew about, like really, really well respected people in the industry. And they have like index cards that they're crossing stuff out and, you know, oh, you know, games don't work and changing you see rules them, right? in the changing, middle of the test. Yeah, you know, and hearing, you know, really critical feedback and accepting it and that kind of is what gave us the confidence to start to putting our game out there because it's really hard to put your game out there and you don't know how it's going to be received. 
So go to these events, see, you'll see everybody is there for the same reason, um, and your confidence will definitely jump up when you see how much, you know, how, how green everyone else is also. <laughs> Uh, some of the other things that you can do if you want to kind of take the plunge a little bit further, uh, actually start uh, creating some content uh, yourself that uh, share your experiences as you get started with design. Um, there are free logging platforms, uh, Tumblr, uh, WordPress, um, and, and you, can, you can write about your uh, gaming experience, your design experience, you can ask questions, uh, provide updates on uh, how your design is developing. Um, you could, their their uh, podcasting uh, and doing vidcasts are easier than ever, um, and there there are a number of people who uh, have kind of chronicled their journey uh, to become board game designers by creating blogs and podcasts. Yeah, one of them is uh, building the game podcast. They, you know, two friends decide that they're going to design games together, and they're just going to chronicle it. So they started this podcast where they talk about it, and they interview other designers, and. Their podcasts have been so well received that now, you know, a lot of publishers are interested in them and they know their process and they know what their personality is. So it's opened up a whole lot of doors and they're great guys also. Mm -hmm. so. so they were able to use uh, their, uh, their experience, kind of giving back, telling about their experiences. Now that's a foot in the door for them uh, when they need publishers. They've got a name in the industry. People know them. Oh, they're building the game guys. Cool. Uh, Cardboard Architects is another podcast uh, where, where these are to unpublished designers and they talk about their experience and what they were learning along the way. That's useful to new designers. Um, last thing uh, that uh, you can uh, get involved with, organizing events. It's very easy to uh, connect with some of the organizations that, uh, that, that run unpublished game design events. Uh, Unpub is a very popular one. Protospiel is also um, there's uh, going to be an Unpub Mini next week here at Bethany, um, and uh, the organizations will provide you with uh, materials that uh, to kind of get you get you rolling, uh, put up posters, spread word, um, find other designers. Um, it's a great way to connect with other designers, especially local designers. These sorts of events they can uh, create connections and uh, create design groups, and you can get a design group. Or group of regular people that you're playing each other's games and providing feedback, that is an incredible resource. That will help you out so much. It will speed up the process of playtesting and refining your game. Yeah, and it doesn't, the organized events, it doesn't always have to be a major event, like an unpub or um, a pro spiel. It could be something that you do in your house. Once you meet a couple people, invite them over on a Saturday night, order pizza, and play games, play test games. We actually um, have a play testing night or day at our house at least once a week. And we have a core group that comes. It's like four other people. Um, if we have it during the weekend, on the weekend, it's, it could be any number, 10 to 15 people. But, um, and so the organizing events, it helps because it helps us get our games play tested. It helps them get their games play tested. And again, you're building the important relationships. Um, you, in particular, may have some kind of skill that you might not realize right off the bat could be applicable to the board game design industry. Um, the board game, a lot goes into board game design. Uh, there, it, a lot of practices, a lot of skills have some bearing on the industry. Um, if you are good with writing and editing, rule books need to be edited. Crowdfunding yes. campaign pages need to be edited. Rule of writing is super hard, um, and so finding mistakes in them is incredibly valuable. If a rule book is broken, the game is broken. Um, and with some of these things, so it's saying volunteer your skills. If you're able to write a rule book, volunteer to do it a couple times. Build a name for yourself, and then people will pay you to do it. I mean, we have people coming to us all the time saying, oh, I wish I had somebody to write my rule book. Um, I mean, that is something that is really needed. And with all of these skills, that's something. Start off volunteering first, and then that can turn into your business.
translating into other languages. If you speak another language, that is a great skill. Um, board games are a global market, um, and publishers are always looking for ways to make the most of the games that they have published. So if you can help translate a rule book, and then it can either be posted online or maybe even published um, on paper, that would be super helpful for them. Uh, any graphic design skills that you have, um, or even if you just have an eye for graphic design, if you uh, can provide feedback on whether something in the game is clear, very useful for a, a designer uh, or for a publisher. Yeah, we actually, graphic design is something that we can speak to personally. When we were first starting, um, our logo was kind of hand drawn, or Chris did it with the icons. It wasn't. It was, it was Microsoft Paint. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, very, very. Uh, not, not well done. We met um, a guy at a convention and we became friends with him and he said, you know what, I'm going to take like a little bit of time and I'm going to make you a logo. And he, he emailed it to us. He's like, here's a logo. Let me know if you like it. We're like, wow, we do. And he's like, he's like a jurist. That's it. And we built a relationship with him. So a couple years later, we now have this big infographic project that we need a graphic designer for and the licensing report. The licensing report. And we called him up and we're like, hey, remember you did this logo for us. We would now like to hire hire you to do this infographic. And he of course said yes and you know, um, so he was paid to do it after volunteering. You know, after he volunteered to make us the logo, we then hired him as our graphic designer for that project. Um, and that project was really well received <coughs> and we always go out of our way to say, you know, how fantastic. His name is Brad Smoley, by the way. Um, he's a fantastic man, fantastic graphic designer. Um, and that was all because he took the time to volunteer and, you know, he helped us with our logo. Uh, one of the more unusual routes that we've actually seen uh, a number of designers get their name out there, uh, solo variants. Solo board gaming is a growing niche within a growing niche industry. Um, and at the moment, there aren't a whole lot of games that you can play solo, uh, but it's becoming much more common. Um, and so games that have been published that play two or more players, uh, there, there have been a handful of designers who have gone, taken these games, and created their own solo variants and posted online at, say, BoardGameGeek.com uh, to say, hey, uh, check out you know this uh, thing that I came up with. Um, and, there, and there are a couple of uh, designers who have used that and now they have gotten their own game, their own original designs published. Um, Mike Mullins uh, is one of them. Uh, he's gotten uh, several games published now. Uh, uh, Morton Monrad Peterson, uh, he actually had, he actually works for a publisher now, Stonemeyer Games, um, and they kind of got their start doing solo variants for other existing published games. Yeah, so again, they found something that they really enjoy doing. They enjoy playing solo games. They started doing it. They put it out there for other people to play. People in the industry realized this, said, oh, that's great. And now people go to them and ask them to help develop their games for solo variants. Um, and so one thing that you should kind of keep in mind, uh, these are just a few ideas. Uh, these are some things that we've seen work in the industry. But there are probably an infinite number of other things that you could do. Uh, like we said at the top, if you have a need for something, if there's something that you wish was out there, you can be the one that does it and puts it out there. And that helps you get your name out there by helping everybody else and helping yourself in the process. Yeah, we, um, as we said in the beginning, when we started this, we really started it just to help people. We didn't have this ulterior motive or <laughs> anything. It was just, hey, we want this information. I think other people do too, what can we do? And just doing this work has just really helped us so much. So anything that you can do to help other people in the industry, do it. And that, that will really help you get your name noticed. Uh, if you have any questions, um, or if you want to find out more about uh, what we've done, the licensing contracts, the blog where we have links to literally thousands of articles uh, about board game design in the industry, and it's searchable. Um, the interviews, uh, what else is out there? There's playtesting events listed. Yes. As we see them, we, we post them. There's uh, the game design contest right now. If you want, if you're designing a game, 
please look into entering into our contest. It's really good. Um, we make sure that the designers get feedback from the judges, which is, again, giving back to the community. The, the judges are really well-known judges. Um, there are people designers, in the industry, publishers. designers, publishers, uh, gamers that are very well-known, very respected in the industry, and they are going to take the time and review your video pitch and your rules, and they are going to give you um, very informative feedback. Uh, we have the publisher directory is up there also. That's the, the newest feature that we just added. Uh, but again, if there's anything that uh, that we don't have up there, you could do it. You could uh, look for it. You could ask other people if they've seen something like it. Talk to us about it. Uh, yeah. And you know, we'd love to see what uh, what you guys are interested in. And also, be willing to volunteer your time. Um, if you go to a convention, publishers are always looking for people to help them in their booth. Um, if you go to a convention and you're willing to spend four hours in a booth uh, showing other, you know, demoing games, you'll make such good um, relationships with publishers. We actually have a friend who at Gen Con last year was volunteering for um, a publisher, pitched the game, the publisher said, oh, this isn't right for us, pitch it to so-and-so, which is probably, which was a huge board game. One of the biggest publishers. One of, one of the biggest publishers. And just from this man volunteering, he was able to get in front of this huge publisher who he had no relationship with, but now he does. So always try to see how you can help others, and they will literally bend over backwards to help you. Not literally, but <laughs> 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 they will definitely bend over backwards.